This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Denver, Karen Valentine, Walt, the cast of Soap, Henry Winkler, Mr. Ed and Wilbur, Marty J. Wiley, Mark Schmidbauer, and in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... Tuesday at 6, Wednesdays at 10, Thursdays at 3. At Darren Pamela Ferdin. Um, oh, no, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um, to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland, the video journal of popular culture. I'm Mark Schmidbauer. And I'm Wilbert Neal. And today we're here to pick up again on our, well, the second part of our discussion of DC Comics. That's right. But before we get into it, I want to tell you that we're on Tuesdays at 6. Wednesdays at 10. And Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable, Cable 21. 21. And also, if you want to write into Vast Wasteland, our box number is 15 14 11. Columbus, Ohio. 43215. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so get in there and uh, write in and tell us to stop doing this sing songy thing. Both or whatever. And often. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, the second part of the, the big history of DC Comics. When we left off several weeks ago, we, we, would, we were just finishing up the Golden Age of DC Comics, which basically ran into about the mid 50s. It, most people are kind of saying, Right after the war, a lot of people say, that basically ended off. Uh, basically what happened was uh, kids, for some reason, I think mostly because of TV, uh, just weren't buying the comics. And so sales were dropping like mad. And, of course, uh, there was the TV influence and the Wortham influence. Mm. Dun, 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 dun. Well, this guy, uh, the, the Wortham influence was uh, Dr. Frederick Wortham, or Wortham, I don't know how to pronounce it, is uh, he wrote this book called Seduction of the Innocent. And it was a book about how comic books were destroying America's kids. And America took it incredibly seriously. I mean, he was a, he was, you know, he, it wasn't like a joke book or anything, but I mean, <laughs> 
he was saying that look at these panels and there and there were a lot of really rude things going on at the time uh, EC comics oh, uh, yeah. educational was uh, crypt of fear and uh, and Tales 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 Crypt, Crypt, that, that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so there was a lot of you know uh, a lot of injury to the eye panels and stuff like that. And actually, today, a lot of the a lot of the ones that are mentioned in Seduction of the Innocent, and there's another one, P.O.P. I'm trying to remember. Well, anyways, uh, actually, today, that those particular comics are now worth more because they were mentioned in this book. Yes. <laughs> so, um, because of that, those two influences. Uh, things basically went to hell in the comic book industry and certainly to DC. The whole industry had to get together to fight off uh, the Wortham Crusade to uh, to ban comic books because the Senate was just about this is like 1954 or something like that. Somewhere right. They were they were about to basically say here are the rules for comic books and the Senate was going to put rules th yeah. down. And the comic book company said this is going to ruin us. So we'll put together the Comics Code Authority. Da -da -da. <laughs> the little sticker you'd still see on most of the comic books, although it is enormously decreased in size. Yes. I mean, the beginning was like a fourth of the page was approved by the Comics Code Authority. And now, if you look really closely, you might be able to find it. Oh, I doubt you're going to find it on a Lobo comic. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> Lobo is just... <laughs> but most of them still have that darn uh, approved by the Comics Code Authority. Uh, yeah, Lobo is pretty much a yeah. mature reader. Yeah, pretty <laughs> but uh, uh, at the uh, today, pretty much you only see the major comic book companies use that. The independents consider it a joke, and they never use it. And I think in the next couple of years, you're going to see it disappear <laughs> completely, because it's because it's you know they're all doing mature comics now. But in any case, um, this the, was really the only way they could get published. Then they had to have something. They had that. to have something to say. Hey, we're you know we're not all that evil. We're we're doing good things. And and there and the Comics Code Authority at the beginning was so damn restrictive <laughs> that you really couldn't have anything that interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was you could never see any anything that might even even suggest gore. <laughs> Or, or not, not even gore, but I mean any, I mean anything that might be objectionable to parents. Which, yeah. which was pretty much everything. Everything. And mm -hmm. so the comic books got boring, and the superheroes were fighting aliens and stuff because you couldn't have them beating up on on regular hoods because they might injure them, and that would be objectionable. <laughs> so, so they were so they were fighting aliens, and they and they got into a lot of of civic-minded type stuff, and it was really boring. <laughs> um, so. After a while, the only thing you saw at DC <laughs> were... Basically, you've got your... Um, I don't know if we can see this or not, but basically what we're talking about are... Um, romance, romance comics. Romance comics, <laughs> which uh, uh, these were, you know, kind of kind of dippy things. You still see them today, although really the, the romance comics have really gone by the wayside by the 70s. Uh, humor and, comics. And <laughs> humor comics were just like... Take whoever happens to be a comedian. They were like Bob Hope comics. I think DC actually put out Bob Hope comics. Yeah, and there was have. a Jerry Lewis comic, like like mm -hmm. the one here. Here's a Jerry Lewis. <laughs> there was that, a Lauren Hardy comic. There's that romance comic again. Yeah, I'll just put my hand all over the thing. Yeah, so you can't, can't see, see any of it. <laughs> and finally, Jerry Lewis and finally the science fiction science comics, fiction like comics Mystery into Space, here. because you know you could have alien races and just draw lots of weird stuff without actually getting into significant issues or anything. <laughs> and <laughs> People are rocketing not. around and, and blowing up aliens, because it was, it, call it blowing up aliens was cool then, you know, it wasn't like, you know, no one was going to object if you blew up a few aliens. <laughs> That's right, and you, you didn't use guns, either right. they were um, not guns that shot bullets, they were ray guns, and who mm. knows what a ray gun can do to you, you know. They just and, and knock it, people out or gets something. In office. Right. Anyway, but, but <laughs> <laughs> in any case, so, uh, by the time the 50s were over with, um, the only superheroes at DC that were still out of comic book were Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. <laughs> Everybody else had disappeared. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, they've, now, they've now written in the, into the continuity <laughs> to, to try to explain inside the DC actual universe's continuity. What uh, happened to right. the old heroes? <laughs> and they said that there was, during the... Um, the McCarthy hearings uh, in the DC universe that uh, they called up the superheroes and said, well, you know, we really should know who you really are. So we want to know your secret identities. And they went, no, and we're leaving. And they all disappeared. <laughs> so, and that's how they explained it. <laughs> well, so um, 
the golden age ended, and for, uh, depending on who you talk to, a number of years going to about 58 all the way to maybe 62, actually 55 to 62, um, things were just really bad in the comic book industry. Uh, no one was making any money. Uh, most of the, um, a lot of the big companies just disappeared. Uh, by the end, Marvel and DC were about the only ones left. I mean, yeah. Dell was out there and, and, and uh, Disney was doing stuff. But as far as anybody who might do a superhero comic, it was pretty much all over with. And then um, DC started a comic book called Showcase. Showcase's idea was we're going to bring um, new characters and new and possibly current characters that we're thinking of maybe having a comic book for. And we'll do three issues of them and then we'll move on to somebody else. And if we get a lot of good response and we sell a lot of comics, we'll maybe make this guy, we'll decide whether we're gonna have a comic book for this guy or not. So, Showcase started. I don't happen to remember who did Showcase 1 through 3. I think it might have been Enemy Ace. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> but the important one was not, was not issues 1 through 3. The important one was issue 4. <laughs> well, The Flash was, um, was issue 4. first revival, okay. Was, right, was and, issue four, and right? that was, uh, the, the first, uh, considered the first Silver Age character. I know there's going to be some people out there who are going to say, no, Martian Manhunter was really the first Silver Age character. He was around before the other heroes. But really, <laughs> I, consider, I consider the Golden, the, the Silver Age Flash to be the first Silver Age character. Okay. Because he really started the whole thing. I mean, Martian Manhunter was out there, but he kind of retroactively got thrown into the Silver Age, I think. So... Uh, the Flash came out, and of course, based on the Golden Age Flash, uh, a new costume, a lot faster, a little, a lot more scientific about how things happen. And there was always all these these things at the bottom of the screen. Gardner Fox, who had done the original Flash comics, was doing a lot of the new Flash, oh. and there would be a lot of uh, explaining, uh, little little bars saying how he th would be able to throw a straw. What, what, what is it? <laughs> They, 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 they would always, you always throw things that you wouldn't think would go through other things, and they did. And yes. they would explain, in the same way that a hurricane could throw a straw in such a <laughs> velocity that it would go through, like, like a, a timber or something, you know. <laughs> and they were always doing this scientific thing of, well, he doesn't burn up because there's a protective war around his body and all this. <laughs> so. He just creates one as he yeah, runs. Yeah, so. And he was the first real, real, and there it is. <laughs> There's, there's the, the, the first, uh, is well, that, is that? It might that, not be the first one, but it's, uh, actually it isn't. Yeah, you're right. It's actually one of the, one of the later one of the later ones, but it is Flash appearing the, in Showcase Comics there. And, and an interesting concept here was, this was the first comic book that, that at least I know of, that, uh, acknowledged the golden age of comics. Because they said that this guy who got, uh, who, uh, this Barry Allen guy, yeah. who was, hit by uh, lightning while he was standing in front of this rack of chemicals, and it threw all these chemicals around his, over his body, and he gained his super speed. And he decided, based on his, his comic book collection, that he was going to uh, base it on the Golden Age Flash. The he was going to name yeah. himself the Flash. <laughs> so, kind of an interesting thing there. Well, uh, Showcase went on to basically repopulate <laughs> the entire DC universe again with uh, resurrections of the Green Lantern, yeah. and, and of course the Green Lantern really the first um, the first hero with this truly cosmic origin. <laughs> I mean, other ones were really kind of vague as far as there were other heroes that had weird cosmic type origins, but Green Lantern was the first one to just really. <laughs> it was really weird. <laughs> well, <laughs> because. They explained that, well, he wasn't the only Green Lantern. He was the Green Lantern of Sector 2814. Yes. Because way in the center of the universe, the Owens on the planet, uh, the Guardians of the Universe on the planet Oa, Oa. <laughs> uh, decided that, well, we should probably have like a galactic police force and we'll give them these rings and they can do basically things that the old Green Lantern did, like make uh, punching, uh, <laughs> big giant punching fists, punching fists, and you know he could, you could b through your willpower uh, create anything you wanted. It would be, be out of this green light. <laughs> That's basically, yeah. There's green. the, there's the, but uh, see what happened was uh, 
unlike the original Green Lantern, and, and, and in my opinion, just as silly a weakness as wood, is yellow. yellow. Anything yellow, he has no, no the, power over. Due to a necessary impurity in the ring. <laughs> which I, which I, I, can't, I can't remember how many thousands of times that was, you saw that line, due to a necessary impurity in the ring. <laughs> So he's not all powerful, right. in other words. <laughs> so if you wore a lot of yellow, he couldn't do a lot to you. <laughs> so amazing that more of his more of his uh, super villain uh, foes didn't just wear yellow. <laughs> Maybe they thought it was cheating. <laughs> well, you know, there was this fairness because of that right. um, that, that comic code right. thing. There. <laughs> it could be unfair. That's right. Well, let's see who else do we have from from. Uh, Showcase. From showcase, let's see, um, Challengers of the Unknown. Right. There was a, a big one. They were probably the, I think they were the first ones, woo, okay, to actually get their own title from the showcase thing. Even though, I mean, it did bring back the Flash and right. Green Lantern right. and um, the, Challengers the, of the, Unknown. the Adam, right. people like that. Lois Lane even appeared in there. Adam Strange. Oh, yeah. And the Metal Men. <laughs> The Challengers of the Unwound were the first ones to get their own title. And they were basically just um, daredevil type people, mostly, and, and, and one of them was a scientist. And they'd go and, and, and do impossibly uh, dangerous things. You know, I mean, and, you know they'd, they'd fight villains and stuff, and, yeah. and they'd always be able to figure out a way out of it. <laughs> they'd be thrown in horrible traps. And <laughs> Let's see, who else have we got here? Um, Blackhawk, people like that. Well, you guys talk about the metal men. Okay. <laughs> certainly, certainly, I mean, again, I don't know. This, see, DC in the 50s and 60s was nothing if not scientific. Yeah. <laughs> Everything was scientific. And so you had this, this scientific group of heroes. They weren't actually people. They were robots. They were robots. <laughs> and they were formed out of, each was formed out of a specific element. A specific element, element yes. With a responsometer, <laughs> <laughs> which, which was this tiny little device they never really explained. When put in this robot, it could allow the robot to uh, assume any shape. Yes. And there was, and the leader of the team was gold, and the woman in the group was platinum, and there was tin, lead, iron, mercury. mercury. I think that's it. Oh, yeah. And they all had like the the uh, characteristics, the what you would, I don't know, if you if you gave emotions to metals, <laughs> you know, gold was really really you know uh, the, the the leader of the group, and he was really really smart and all this and mercury was was really uh, was really mad all the time and and tin was always kind of shy and, yeah. and, <laughs> and lead was, was the kinda strong man but he was kind of dumb, dumb you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then they made the tin guy a little tin woman named tina or yeah <laughs> well no tina was the platinum one tina was platinum yeah oh, tina was well, platinum who was the tin woman i don't know you got me. <laughs> well, now, by golly, I guess we we'll just have to. I'm sure right somebody in. out there has one of some of right those in. old metal men comic yeah. books. Because, see, I'm sure that Tina was the little, the tin woman that they no, made Tina for the I tin know man. was platinum. Okay. I know Tina was platinum. Oh, well, why couldn't she just be platy? <laughs> <laughs> she was platy. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, so, showcase virtually repopulated the DC universe of heroes and because until then most of the heroes were gone and this started certainly the Silver Age yes uh, culminating in what is considered the greatest comic of the Silver Age uh, flash number I think it's 110 flash of two worlds <laughs> in which um, both flashes uh, appeared in the same comic at the same time and was the first comic which brought up the concept of the multiverse, da, da, da. <laughs> not just the universe, the multiverse, that everybody said, well, you know, if there's all these new heroes, what happened to all the old heroes? They just retired and they disappeared. In fact, now they're saying that these other heroes didn't ever even exist. So what happened to them? Well, now, wait a minute. Now, I thought they had been into another, um, in another dimension. Well, well that's, that's, <laughs> that's what they explained. Was okay. that, well, there's Earth 1, where most of the stuff happens, and then there's Earth 2, which is where all the Golden Age heroes hung out. Okay. And they were, of course, Earth 2 and Earth 1 were in the same spot, but they were separated by, the by a different... No, no, no. no. <laughs> they are separated by a different dimensional frequency or something. Oh, okay. So, so 
uh, certain heroes, like the Flash, who could vibrate through concrete and stuff, <laughs> could basically vibrate into the other continuity. <laughs> and that's what he did. He accidentally did that one time, and he found out the Golden Age universe existed. Yeah. <laughs> Starting the beginning of the JLA, JSA team-ups. <laughs> yes. The Justice League of America that was formed out of all these heroes, the new heroes, and the Justice, Justice Society, Society of America, America. The, the old heroes from the 40s. And, and they, they were all living on Earth, too. <laughs> well, they were, yeah, yeah. All hanging out on Earth, too. And then the, you get into these fun things with, uh, there's like an older Superman who's got graying temples. Right, yeah, and, and not nearly as strong, because they, they said for a while that he could still only leap an eighth of a mile. <laughs> Although later they kind of rescinded that and said, well, he's pretty much as powerful because he's older now, and he's yeah. more experienced. And he knows what to do. <laughs> he, he's worked it all out, apparently. And and also in Earth 2, in, uh, I believe in the 70s, Batman retired in, on Earth 2 and married... Selina Kyle. No. Didn't he marry Selina? No, because they weren't, they weren't friends there. <laughs> oh, I don't no. think they did. I may be wrong about that. I think he married um, Kathy... Kathy Kane or oh, whatever. Oh, Batwoman. Batwoman okay. from the old, from, from Earth 2. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so the Earth 2 universe, the heroes were older, but they still could go out there and, and, and fight pretty well. <laughs> yeah, you've got your, you got your, what, Black Canary. Right. Your, um, <laughs> Our Man. Right. <laughs> Dr. Fate. Yeah. <laughs> And every year uh, in Justice League of America, which, again, was the, the Silver Age equivalent, they'd have them come on over, and they just happened to be together, and there'd be a, a menace that neither of them could fight alone. But together, together by we could golly. take them out. <laughs> Even though it was just like one guy, you right. know. <laughs> He was just well, so dastardly year, that... <laughs> well, the one year, this is, this is the one I really loved, was the... Uh, was the villains from Earth 3. Whoa. <laughs> Earth 3, where all the super-powered people are bad guys. <laughs> so, so they came in, and they beat up the people from Earth 2, they beat up the people from Earth 1, and then Earth 2 and Earth 1 got together and beat up the Earth 3 people. It's kind of like a tag team match. Yeah. <laughs> That was, that was always the thing that impressed me about it. It's like they're, they're, that whole tag team mentality. Yeah. Is... <laughs> they could never work well together when they were in small groups. They always get beat up every time, or when they went on their loan. Yeah. When they always got own, beat up. Just but when they got together, up. the teamwork would kick in, and they'd, and they'd kick the other guy's butt. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, it's, it was just funny. <laughs> Plain and, and simple, yeah, it's just funny. Funny. And anyways, <laughs> meanwhile, during all this, um, by this point, for, for the most part, the same people who had been doing, say, Superman since, ooh, we're almost done. Gad Zooks. <laughs> Already, goodness. Gad Zooks. Well, okay, anyways, the people who had been doing Superman since the beginning of time were still there. And uh, they were run out of ideas, so it began the imaginary stories, <laughs> which there's virtually no continuity in the 1960s because virtually every story was imaginary. After a while. <laughs> After a while, because they ran out of ideas. And they went, what if we killed Superman and, or what if Superman married Lois, or what, what if, if... What if Batman got Superman's superpower? Yeah. <laughs> or what if Jimmy Olsen just happened to uh, become a bad guy? <laughs> or, or what if... This weird explosion occurred, which created two Supermen. That was the weirdest one. Oh, the blue and, Superman and, yeah, the, and red the red Superman. Superman who, <laughs> who were a thousand times smarter than the original Superman, so they figured out all the problems on Earth <laughs> and retired. Yes. <laughs> amazing. Simply amazing. Well, anyways, yikes. We, we have really have not even got to the 70s. We may have to take this into a third part. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we have to move this into a third part because it's about time for In the Attic with Marty Wiley. Take it away, Marty! Hello, welcome to the attic. Uh, today's topic is the lava lamp. As you see right here. I first saw a lava lamp probably back in the early 60s. I don't know when they really originated or where or anything. But I remember they had a display of them at the dime store. There was a big glass counter, and they had them kind of lined up in the bottom of the counter. And I remember just right near the front door when you'd first come in, and I'd get stuck there looking at the lava lamps. They had like this blue-green color, and I remember there were red ones too that just looked like hell or something. And I can remember just being real fascinated by those things. 
and then when I graduated from high school, I was pleasantly surprised to receive my own lava lamp from my Aunt Mary and Uncle Bill as a graduation gift. Um, probably about the most favorite graduation gift I got besides the money that you get when you graduate. And I became the first and only person I ever knew that actually had one of these things in their home. I don't know how they work. I don't know what's inside them. I don't know anybody who's ever busted one open to find out. But the lava lamp is definitely probably the eighth wonder of the world in the 20th century today. See ya. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, thanks a lot, Marty. Thanks a lot for that nostalgic look. <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> well, uh, next time on Vast Wasteland, uh, we're going to be talking, uh, Marty and, uh, and Wilbert are going to be talking about the uh, second part of our toys, going in, going into more of the toys, because darn it, there's just so many toys out there, you can't get through all of them. I mean, look what we do with the comics. Yeah. We've got to come back I'm another amazing. time. Simply amazing. Because we just rattle on forever, basically. That's what it is. <laughs> well, you see, that's the thing about comics. You've got all you this stuff just... written down. Yeah. <laughs> I, there's just so many. <laughs> and, 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 and what can you do except That's right. talk about them? <laughs> so, so let's see. We have uh, next time is the is the second part of toys, and then we'll have a TV theme show again, and then we'll be back again yeah, with we'll be the back third again. part <laughs> of, of the DC universe. DC universe. We may never end this. This is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> hard to believe. Truly, hard That's to believe. That's right. So we'll, we'll hopefully finish this DC thing up next time. I would certainly hope so. <laughs> <laughs> or gosh darn it, we'll try out we'll the hard We'll try our it. damnedest. So for all of us here at Vast Wasteland, we'll see you next time. Go on, everybody! Ho, ho. And y'all remember to vote now, you hear? <laughs> Here's the deal. <laughs>